Okay, the TLDR for this video, or I guess it's TLDW, too long didn't watch. Anyway, is that I have an SSM VB3 video board for the S100 bus system, but the documentation that was sent with it and all the documentation I can find online is for the VB3A version. And this part of the board is different. So to figure out what these dip switches do, I need to get the docs for the version of this without the A. So if you have those docs, please let me know. Okay, let's get to it. Hi there, my name is Aaron Lanterman. I'm a professor of electrical and computer engineering at Georgia Tech, and this is the VB3A video board by Solid State Music. So this plugs into an S100 bus computer, so we're gonna try this in our MSI 8080. And I got this on eBay, and this was sold as is, so I'm not really gonna complain, but it's missing U19. So what is U19? Let's go over here. Um, let's see. So U19 is a 74LS74. Why was that missing? Was somebody desperate for a 74LS74? Let me go check my part supply. Oh, yay. I have a 74LS74. And let's see. There's another IC socket here that's unpopulated. Now, is that supposed to be for jumpers? Because it doesn't look marked. Let's see, I've got U20, and then U21, U22, U23. U19 was this one, here's U18. What is this one? I don't see a marking on it. Huh. Oh, it's even worse than I thought. This is not a missing chip. This is the keyboard connector. So, this way that Steve Wozniak on the Apple II decided to use an IC socket for the joystick slash paddle slash button connector. They decided to use an IC socket for the keyboard connector. This is a terrible idea. So Steve Wozniak is a brilliant, brilliant electronics designer, but that was a terrible choice to use an IC socket for the game port, and it is a terrible choice to use IC sockets for this keyboard connector, but it is what it is. Oh, and here's the video connector. It turns out pin three here is the composite, and then some of the others are ground, and there's other sort of sync outputs and various things, but looks like we can get a composite out of here, so we'll have to make a little adapter for that. Oh, look, here's a bunch of switches. Welcome to the S100 bus system. Okay, so... It looks like we have some memory over here, and there's RAM chips missing. I'm hoping that people didn't just raid this board for RAM chips at some point, and that there are different levels of memory you can put in it, and what's currently in is an allowable configuration. So let me check the manual for that. Okay, well, at least this photo from the S100 computer site shows the same missing chips, so that's a good sign. So I was hoping that the manual I received with this as part of my eBay purchase was specific to whoever actually owned this board and set it up because it had little annotations in it, like this set up little Fido, whatever that means. But it turns out if you go to the S100 computer's website, it's the same manual. So it looks like whoever set up this package for me just printed out what's on the website here, which is fine. Oh, well, looking at the manual, notice that the memory here, these are 4K by 1-bit chips, skip 4142, 45, 46, etc. And that matches the chips which are skipped over here. So I guess, I think this might have come as a kit originally. I'm not sure. So I'm guessing in its base form, this works, and then the user could install more memory if they want, something like that. Oh, here we go. There's apparently a variation of it that also includes the following part. So those are the missing chips. So I'm guessing you could pay a certain amount of money and get it without those chips, but if you got the fancier version, then you also got these chips. Hmm. Okay, let's check our jumper settings. Let's see, wire wrap headers allow the EEPROM to be either a 2016 or a 2032. So let's see, at U28, 
we have, let's see, that's a 2016. So if we have a 2016, we should be connecting E2 and E3. And the way I have the board oriented, according to this jumper drawing, E2 and E3 are the ones on top here. So let me grab a shunt to jumper that. Here are my shunts. Oh, wait a minute. I just noticed that somebody already soldered a permanent jumper in here. All right, so that's set. Okay, we also have E5, E6, E7. So that's down here. Okay, let's see here. Address strobe options. Oh, good grief. Okay, so depending on... The strobe is generated by Nanding. Oh my goodness. So I've got... Z80 timing, 8080 timing, IEEE 696 timing. This is the another name for the S100 bus standard, I believe. Let's see. It says here, certain Z80 CPU boards can be used with the strobe addressing option. The SSM CB2, for example, can be used in this mode. Determine whether your CPU can be used, check your CPU board, and verify the timing operations. So do you all appreciate how convenient and nice modern computers are. I mean, do you understand, do you see how difficult how difficult it was computing back in the day? All right, so the latching action will reduce the possibility of bus noise creating a valid address. So I'm ho hoping that maybe some of this is optional. And if I just leave this alone, can I leave it alone or do I? Ha it looks like I actually have to choose something Let's see, the 696 timing, see note in this section. The new IEEE standard has created a new signal, which replaces V1. If your CPU generates this, type in E6 to U30. Oh, that's an IC pin. That's some hardcore hacking there. Um, let me see if the board has that already. And it does not. This is U30. It doesn't have anything tied to it. But if I am reading this right, it looks like we are going to have to select one of these things. Let me go see what Z80 board we actually have. We, we have an 8080 board and we also have a Z80 board. The 8080 board was originally donated by Whit Smith as part of his original system, which is the MSI 8080 we have. The Z80 board is something I bought later. So let me go look. So here's our MSI 8080. Let's see, our Z80 board is a 1976 board by Chromemco. So the way this is written, it says certain Z80 boards can use the strobe addressing option, 8080 timing. So I'm going to assume that our Z80 board can't. So I would like to then connect E5 and E6. And E5 and E6 are the top to over here. Let me just double check that. Yeah, so I've got E5 and E6. But there's a dilemma. If I flip this over, I see that these two are already connected. So it's already hooked in this 8080 mode because if you check this out, there's a little solder jumper there. I really do not want to have to take a soldering iron to this board unless we're really sure we need to. So how about let's just start with it in this 8080 mode and we'll try it. And if it doesn't work, then we'll maybe try switching it to this Z80 mode. <sighs> okay, let's look at the switches. So here we have S3. Let's see what that is. That's... Keyboard addressing. Switch S3 is used to select the address of the keyboard status and keyboard data port. All right, it can use any port. The interesting thing to note here is software from SSM will use ports E0 and E1 for the keyboard and data ports, respectively. Okay, so let's go with that. So uh, I see somebody even noted E1 here. So that's 1110001, and that corresponds to the K data port. Let's see, so I'm going to guess that this is pretty close already. So if something's up, I guess that's a one. So I think I also now need to switch this to a one. And incidentally, doing that makes it match what's in the photo here. Not that this should be taken as gospel. 
I don't know. Okay, so S4 is this here. So it uses some address. So by setting switches in S4, positions one, two, three, you select the address of the video display RAM. Software obtained from SSM uses C000 through DFFF. So let's stick with this. So for that, we need 110. All right. So I think we do need to change things here. So that would be 1, 1, and then 0. Okay, and here it says the VB3A uses a software-controlled CRT chip. You can set to any port on a 16-port boundary, yada, 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 and is set by positions 4, 5, 6, 7. And again, the software team from SSM uses D0 to DF for addressing, so let's stick with that for now. So that would be 1, 1, 0, 1. All right, so that would be 1, 1, and then, oh, then is this one busted? Oh, don't tell me. That one's busted. Okay, one, one, zero, one. And then it looks like eight's not used. Okay, off camera, I was able to finagle it to get in this position. One, one, zero, one, I think. I should notice that that is not in any way what's on the screen here. But again, we shouldn't take this as a universal truth. And now the plot thickens. We have this switch bank S1 here, but looking at the bill of materials, there is no S1. And when I look at this uh, jumper drawing, there's a bunch of jumpers up here, which don't exist on my particular board, and there's these switches here which don't exist on this board, although most of the board looks very much the same. So it turns out this is a VB3 board, which is what I bought on eBay. It called it a VB3, but this instruction manual that whoever sent this printed out is for a VB3A, so it looks like there are some variations. Now, assuming that the A means that it's a later version of the board, I think the A has additional features. Why did they go from primitive jumpers, or I should say, why did they go from dip switches back to more primitive jumpers? That's an odd decision. Let's see if I can find some docs on the VB3 board, because there are some jumpers. If we had the VB3A board, there are some important jumpers in here that I assume these switches take the place of those functions. But if I can't find any docs on this, boy, this is gonna be rough. Anyway, so we have R1 through R4 here on our VB3 board. But if we look at our VB3A documentation, there is no R1 through R4. Huh. So I looked through, and it seems like much of the rest of this matches up in terms of the part numbers here with what's in this documentation. But this stuff in the upper left corner of the board, they jiggled all of this around. Like some of the resistor values that I see on the board don't match resistor values that I see on the schematic or in the documentation here. For instance, R6 here. Let's see, that's 100K. No, pfft, not 100K. It's 100 ohm. Whereas if I look at R6 on the schematic, R6 is 1.2K. Okay, so I spent some time looking online and all I found are teases. Here it says SSM VB3, but when I click on it, oh, it's really the VB3A. So if I can't find the docs for this, then I just spent probably 20 minutes on Google looking for docs. And all the places I say that say, we have VB3, well, they actually have VB3A. So if I can't find that, we're gonna have to actually reverse engineer this part of the board and then compare that to the schematics of the VB3 
3a that we have to try to figure out what these dip switches do. Oh boy, what did I get myself into here? Anyway, if you have a line on documentation for the VB3, not the VB3A, please, please, please email me or leave a comment below. Let me know.